there was a, uh, where this part was a little more tense, I'm gonna, I'm gonna um, do some. Is that the wave? Uh, it is not, um, but I'm just kind of working through that area was tighter. I'm using uh, this part uh, with a straight wrist so that I can sink in there. There we go. Would you do the same if, uh, for people that have like flat feet? Flat feet? Um, yeah, they, um, we work up into the legs as well because they don't have quite all the, the same tone in their legs and do some pin and stretch and things. But yes, we can still do those techniques. And I'm just gonna... And, um, sorry uh, to interject, but um, the hand to works the medial and lateral and work your way back to meet Dally. Yeah, Medially. so we can work our way back. Um, yeah, so we're sorry, did I miss something there? No, I, I didn't read that. I just read hand one. Hand two was yet to be read. Thank you. So, um, you know, when you return, really, which is hand one and which is hand two is what's more comfortable for you. On this foot, I find this angle better. And on this foot, I find this angle better. Um, most people are right-handed or left-handed, and as a massage therapist, you're gonna have to learn how to use both hands, right? Questions? All right, could somebody read the next one, please? The wave, hand one, fist on bottom of foot plancher surface, hand two, all fingers together on top. All right, so you're gonna make a soft fist on the bottom of the foot and a soft hand on top. And your hands are going together towards the client, away from the client. Practice that in the air right now. This looks simple, 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 but for some reason people have a hard time with this. And you can use your whole body's going forward, your whole body's going back. You know, it's kind of like Tai Chi. There we go. For some reason folks have a, a harder time with this one, but you're just together, 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 together. Now, some clients enjoy more pressure, in which case you would just use, you know, your knuckles more. Yep, exactly. There we go. And this whole area where the skin is thicker on the foot, you know, is really great to get in there. And because it's thicker, it can take more pressure. Yes, generally that's true. Great think in there. The table looks perfect while you're sitting, but I felt like when you were standing, it seemed so low to uh -huh. have leverage. Uh huh. Um, that didn't seem Ooh, to bother you. We got a good spot here. I hear it. Crunchy crunch. <laughs> <laughs> That's her eyes and ears. <laughs> <laughs> How's that pressure? Good. Okay. And make sure it's okay on the deeper. Yeah, so we're going to do a lot with body mechanics, you know, and what's a good table height for you and how to adjust your body. We're very lucky on this table, it adjusts electronically up and down so you can keep changing the height throughout the session. And where I work, we have one of these in every station. Um, but yeah. Do you have a preference for the earth light tables? Or does it matter to you? I was going to ask you about that today. Um, there's a lot of just perfectly good tables. I'm not like super attached to the earth lights, but they're nice. Mm -hmm. I have the master, what is it, master massage brand table. Uh huh. Oh, I like, nice. I like that one. Nice. So, uh, just in the uh, you know comment or question about table height, again, this is going to change over the course and what techniques we're doing, but a very rough guideline of where to start is with a loose fist or a hand touching the table. Rough starting place. And we're always bending down and tucking our tailbones to get down to that level. Yeah. Some people like to work with an even much shorter table. There might be times when you like to work with a higher table, but that's just a starting point. The um, hydraulic tables are fabulous. Amazing! Uh, Love them. The they're the best. The uh, they're like twelve hundred dollars. Twelve hundred dollars. Gonna meet some 
wealthy clients, you know what I'm saying? And of course, if you're going to travel to your people, they, they don't work well for traveling, but if you're in one spot, they're fantastic. All right, could someone read the next one, please? Ankle loosening, base of thumb joint, and front of ankle bone and rod. All right, so we're going to use this base of your thumbs into the front of the ankle. We're going to go back and forth. Now that's kind of just where you start, and you're not sliding over the skin on this one, you're locked in. But what I like to do to adjust this one is as you continue to move up and down, you're rolling around the ankle, all the way back into the calcaneus or the heel. And you can really squeeze in there. People love work on El Cal the calcaneus. Notice how far up the movement goes. All the way to her hip. Yeah. Actually, all the way to her head. And that's a good thing. Yeah, it's a great question about how much oil or lotion to use. Well, you could always add, right? Yeah. Like start yes. with a little and then, I mean, not a little, but like not a lot of what little, you little. think. But yes, yeah. a lot of people are answering and that's great that you're oh, all sorry. thinking out loud. No, no, I appreciate it. Just in the video, it might come across that I had a stroke or something. <laughs> <laughs> people are thinking out loud and that's beautiful. Yeah, you can always add more. Um, so you don't really use a lot of lotion, but every client will soak up like a different amount. Some massage therapists, like if they accidentally use too much, will sort of keep some extra right mm. here. Like you can like wipe it off if you need to. <laughs> but um, I start off with a little less than I think I need. Um, but it's one reason I like lotion is because it's flowy at first, but then it sinks in so you can do your deeper work. Yeah. Mm. Other questions or comments on that one? Now, one thing you guys might be noticing, you know, kind of just paying attention between strokes, is that I keep doing warm-up techniques and keep integrating areas, right? And so you're, you know, you're kind of like a, I don't know if an engineer is the right word, but you're really feeling what's going on the whole time and adjusting. And, and, and with this kind of stretch, uh, I'm making sure that the stretch goes all the way up. So could somebody read the next one, please? Ankle range of motion, hand one under heel, left hand under right heel, traction of calcaneus, hand two, rotate foot. Thank you so much. So the bottom hand is going to be under the heel or calcaneus, and this one is nice to really use traction. So I am on a sliding uh, rolling stool right now, so I have my legs locked under the table so that I don't go rolling away because this feels really nice. You see how I'm really pulling her whole body? So you wanna pull from underneath and then stretch up top. And then you can add some motion around. And notice we can get this going all the way up her hips. We don't wanna twist at the ankles. So see when I come out how it's her, uh, Hip is laterally rotating as well. Now, most people like more pressure and stretch on the range of motion than you might think. When you're starting off, a lot of people have the tendency of as soon as they reach a little resistance on this one, they stop. But most people like you to really push through that and give them a good stretch. Yeah, uh, like halfway stretch is so unsatisfying. So unsatisfying. Just rather you yeah. didn't try it at all if you can't really go for it. And how do you like that? Too much pressure? Enjoyable? Beautiful? Yes, thank you. <laughs> you bet. You bet. When you rotate, do you always rotate clockwise? That's a great question. No, it's actually nice to change directions. Yep. Now, some people like to come up with like one fluid motion where they're like, never stop touching the client. You know, that's lovely if that's your thing. Um, you can also just kind of really get into those tight spots. And I mentioned this on the video where if you find a tight spot, if we imagined a clock face, 12 o'clock, 6 o'clock, so forth, you could back up 
you know, if, I, if, the, if the tightness is at 12, I could back up to 10, up to 2, back to 10, up to 2, and really work that out. And it feels great to take the weight for the client. So, you know, I can create a tripod to really support them. But again, I have to be firm enough in my support that they don't feel like they have to help. That's very uncomfortable. Like we feel like they're struggling. Exactly. Exactly. Beautiful. See how happy and loose she is. <laughs> that's where we started. And that's where we're at. Before. After. Before. It's just fun. <laughs> 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 All right, what's next? Sandwich range of motion, sandwich top dorsal and bottom planter of feet between your hands. Thank you. All right, so this one, we're just on the top and the bottom. I like to use my fingers together for support. And you're doing kind of a little round. Great, I love the air massage. Great job, folks. And as we move around like that, we're just feeling, you know, where is it tight? Where is it mobile? And then we can hang out longer where it's tight. There's a tight spot right in here. And so after I really warm this up, I could come, come back to it more directly. Like there's a little bit left right there. And I'm easing into it because there's this long, if I pull her foot back, you could see the long tendon, and that's right where I might, or ligament, that's right where I might make her seize up if I'm too intense. So I'm more gentle next to that ligament. There we go. I, I love foot massage, and people really need this attention on their feet. Of course, you know, we, we stand, we walk, most of our sports are based in, you know, legs and feet. And it's really like a full body massage to work this out well. But as much as most people appreciate deep pressure on their feet, sometimes when you have a tight spot like this, it actually releases better just to kind of back off and just back off and just listen to it. Like somebody's got to, you know, let's pretend we were talking in words instead of touch. Maybe like somebody's having a bad day and they need to be able to talk to you about it and not you like, tell me about your day, damn it. So you're like backing up and just holding space for them. So I'm backing up and I'm just like curious, right? I'm just curious and supportive like, hey, I wonder what's going on here. And also, I'm not attached to the outcome. So she might need to hold on to that right now, and that's, that's her business, not mine. So I'm going to hang out there, and, and if she so chooses, she can, um, her body, right, can uh, let go of this or not. And that may seem a little abstract, but the more massages you receive and the more times you help people, the more you'll feel that and feel that, like, big shift, like a wave. So if she has a shift here, this is going to soften. She's going to have a change in her breathing. And I'm just going to ease that out now. It's like presence on your part and um, permission on a deeper level with her. Mm -hmm. Is this still the sandwich? Yes, I, I went back to the sandwich. And notice I'm taking it all the way out to the toes, which is lovely. So you were doing the sandwich and you're like, hold on, something's, something's here. Let's talk without saying anything. Exactly. And then let's get through this. Beautiful, beautiful. I love how you guys are you're talking out loud, thinking. Massage is such a metaphor for so many things, it seems like. It's really mm. a message. Massage as metaphor. Next TED Talk. <laughs> <laughs> I get some credit for that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we did film you saying it. So. Yes, we do. All right, so just notice I'm taking that um, all the way up to the toes. Don't neglect the toes. The toes need love, too. And we will have uh, some foot massage days where we get a little bit more specific with the toes. But they, they get neglected. In that video, you're 
sending energy or doing something? On the toe tips. Can you, yeah, can that's, you elaborate on that? That's lovely. Well, we will have a whole day just of closure, but sure. Is there another technique? Yes. Yes? Uh, yes. Rib cage relaxation. Thank you. So we're going to do that last technique, and then we'll come back to that closure. Could somebody read rib cage relaxation? Um, all fingers creep along uh, top muscle foot, one lateral to medial, while other uh, medial to lateral. Thank you. So the reason it's called rib cage is because this area in reflexology relates to the rib cage and lymphatics. So in the metatarsal spaces, so there's kind of like uh, outies and innies. Um, we're going in the spaces between where the muscles are. And we are using our fingertips to walk proximally through those spaces. Oh, I feel so good. That's so one of my good. favorite moves. Yay! Do your ribs feel better after? Yeah, I never, I never have. Like that. Yeah, this is the rib cage, right? Yep. So remember that this area of the foot, you know, generally likes it more gently, but you can really, you know, be specific, really get in there, feel where it's tight in those spaces. And then what can be really lovely is to take it all the way up through the ankles as well. We have these uh, connective tissue that are arranged like bandages here called retinacula that hold down the tendons that come up this way. And this can be like a traffic jam in here. So walk that all the way up. And I'm just gonna come back because there was some tightness right here. I also feel like this area is often neglected by other massage therapists. So true. Like they concentrate so much on the bottoms of the feet and then just leave the I've tops and do their own. Do that on me. Oh god, it's delicious. Yeah, they're like really <laughs> stretching it out. Like yeah. when they do massage, might as well just like get into the creases. Yeah, and some, somebody behind me, and uh, I can tell who, I'm just saying for the camera's sake, uh, is talking about, you know, the, the stretching with that too, um, which is lovely. So I'm really stretching here on the toes. And you might have noticed this, or you might have heard it on one of the videos. You know, I really like to go between kind of bigger, deeper kind of techniques, and but also take the time to get really specific. You know, and this is one of those places where you don't want to like randomly jump through. You want to just really, it's so delicious and thoughtful to really go through there slowly. This mask is not wanting to stay up. It's getting retired today. <laughs> I just bought a whole bunch more like it. A colleague of mine gave me this one. So really get in there very specifically. Excellent, was that the last one? Yes. Okay, so we'll have whole days of this where we kind of focus more on how to close the session and how to put things together. So, but for today, we're gonna start off from the knees down with a warm up. And remember we did some, you know, work on the lateral side, some stretching, getting that hip all the way in some long strokes, including the ankle, and all that warm up is before you start um, following those steps in there. And you'll notice it's the first thing written there is that knee down warm up. Then you're gonna follow the steps and just ask us if you need help. Um, always be getting feedback from your client. And then um, you will work both sides. Um, and then for closure, you know, you can talk to the whole legs again. And there was a sort of a request about the kind of toe hold, so I'll use that as today's closure. You could put a fingertip on each toe tip and just take some nice deep breaths with your feet flat. And just about time. half the meridians on the body start or end here, acupressure meridians. So this is a lovely way to open and balance them. And if you take time to just be really still, however you're holding the feet, it's a nice time for the client to sort of integrate and also to adjust, integrate the work that's been done and sort of adjust to the session is over. And so you even want to start thinking about 
you're closing this session in a way that is obvious to the client that we are coming to a close rather than sort of like working, working, working later. Um, so we're, you know, coming to a close here. Are you had a oh, go ahead. Oh, sorry. For this one, I'm just being very gentle, just like touching. just contact to contact just and breathing. And you might actually feel shifts in the pulses, in which case you can wait till you feel kind of this tension, tension, and then waves. That's a good sign, but if you don't feel any of that, that's fine. You can just sit here for a minute or two, just breathe, meditate, pray, sing a song, you know, whatever, in your head. <laughs> and then if you don't want to hold toe tips, you know, any, any kind of hold is nice. So, you know, you could hold, you know, tops and bottoms, bottoms, the sides, but just one, right? You're not jumping around is super random. You're just being nice and still. The other way to kind of invigorate people that is nice to end um, is the tapotman or the percussion. Is it okay if I do some tapping on your feet? Is that boom, boom, boom on your feet? Is okay. that right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you can do some lighter tapping. And notice I'm facing the feet. It just makes it easier to be fling, springy with my wrists. And then this one might look a little aggressive, but most people like it. You're using the side of your hand and supporting their foot and giving them some nice Shop firm ones. thumps. And this usually feels surprisingly good. I love this. Do you like that? Yeah. <laughs> and whoever is her partner should just start with this leg because she's very unbalanced. Right now. <laughs> All right. Any last questions? All right. Let's. Uh, could you stop that, please? Thank you. Thank you.